also something to worry about. Um, yeah, but that it doesn't pay. I mean, like you'll get paid because you get views. Yeah. But if you really want to get paid, paid. So real quick, this video is 19 minutes. It looks like we got enough time in the GoPro to run through this. So we're just gonna play in, press pause, and talk. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is super high tech, folks. Look at the screen share. We got multiple people here. Yeah. This is how YouTube works. And I'm not signed in, so we get ads too. <laughs> Explains why I'm taking a break from YouTube. A sabbatical, not quitting, a sabbatical. A break from YouTube, I'm returning at the end of August 2024. I've built six years building this amazing audience, a very loyal audience, a very caring audience. So I didn't want to just kind of turn out the lights and then turn them back on without explaining what's going on. This is a cutaway from my What's Up Wednesday show. Now they know the punchline, so you don't need to watch any further, but I sure appreciate you watching to understand why, uh, what is happening, what it means for the channel, uh, why I'm taking a sabbatical, what's next for me personally and for the channel, and how you can stay involved, even though I'm gonna go pretty dark on YouTube. We're gonna pop up here and there. Um, comment below, stay involved. Would very much like that to happen. We got some big news to share for it, uh, to share with you tonight. And this is gonna be probably the, the toughest video I've done in my entire YouTube career. We're gonna talk about that tonight. I just wanna thank everybody for being here. Um, I gave some of uh, this amazing audience a heads up this was coming tonight. Some of this is a big surprise to you. And I'm definitely buying some bourbon from the Super Chats. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Stay, hang in there with me. So I'm gonna read off my iPad because this is a pretty heavy subject and I don't wanna goof it up too bad. I'm gonna try really hard Upsetting news to share my sabbatical from YouTube Explain from the channel Go Small Live Large. And this is like educational. This is should be motivational mm -hmm. from the perspective of a YouTube content creator, which I think oftentimes even myself as a YouTube content creator, even you as a YouTube content creator, we can't necessarily connect as well as sharing somebody else's story. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem biased. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So he's going to he's gonna struggle through this a little bit, but it's worth the watch. It's actually my second time watching it. And uh, this will be my second time sharing it. Not to cheer up. All right, let's do this first. This will help. <laughs> so I'm going to make a little pour out of the Jefferson's Reserve. This oh, you had that. From the you had some of that before. A group honoring me for starting my sixth year of full-time travel in my van. So let's do that. So one of the things that I really like appreciate about this really is I want to thank everybody who was there for that. You know, how that. he one of the highlights of my entire YouTube career. Cheers, is addressing his audience, his mm -hmm. subscribers, his mm -hmm. which yeah. I I feel like so I don't really have yet. Right. Yeah. So let me get through my monologue, then we'll take some I feel like I don't really have yet to, to the point of which um, so he can actually what it means for pour a drink mm -hmm. and not get hated on. What's next for the channel and how you can stay involved. If you can help me out with your questions, um, I'm happy to answer questions. I like the format he's got for asking questions. Uh, question format, that would be great. Three stars, three question marks, and then your question will help that come through. And uh, then we'll also, as part of that, say howdy to uh, folks in the audience. And I'm happy to say we added two um, countries on the world map, uh, Chile and Colombia, which is pretty awesome. An international sensation. What's up, Wednesday? Who knew? Um, so let me kind of get into this. Why am I taking the sabbatical? Um, this was... He's an RV. Probably the most difficult decision I've made in many years. Um, it will upset some of you. It will surprise some of you. Some of you may say, I told you so. Um, and all of you wouldn't kind of be wrong, but it's just things have kind of come to a head. And that's what I want to do tonight is talk about what's happening. So what's happening is I need a break. I, I hate that part of this includes I told you so. Yeah. Because I told you so is almost kind of like, yeah, we, we watch and we subscribe and we're here. But we were kind of we were, we were we were banking on your on your failure. Failure. Yeah. Yeah. Need a break. I'm going to explain this more in detail in, in a few minutes. What I did not want to do, because we spent six years growing this community together, is just disappear off YouTube. 
many of the van lifers done it, other YouTube content creators have done it, and I did not want to just disappear without explaining myself and asking for your patience as I take this sabbatical so we can come back stronger than ever. I am a little bit concerned about him taking so much time off and coming back. Mm -hmm. But what were you going to say? Well, I was going to ask, because I've never seen him before. Is it just him or is there like a family, a wife, or anybody like that? Like, I believe it's just him. Okay. For the most part. I think he does end up in different situations with other people, mm -hmm. but it's really just him. Okay. Take a sabbatical from YouTube over the next several months. Little recorded, edited, uploaded video content will be put on YouTube. I've been doing this. Every week, I'm going to show you in a, in a minute, it, it may, might blow your mind, it blows my mind. Tonight will be our last scheduled What's Up Wednesday. That probably hurts my heart the most because this is where we bring our community together, and this is our last scheduled What's Up Wednesday. Uh, what's great is uh, I spoke with all my partners last week, some uh, RV manufacturers, everybody that's kind of been, been a supporter of me, us, the channel. I had conversations with them last week. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Uh, but we might do a, a partner pop-up during this sabbatical. I might just throw a video up. So I was going to say when he's talked about partners and whatnot, when you are a channel that's large enough to have sponsors and contracts, taking a break is sometimes not allowed or gonna cost you money too when you when you stop and think about it because he could in essence be breaking contracts or whatever else and he's probably not gonna break contracts <laughs> but um he's probably not gonna break contracts okay it's he's probably got this planned out yeah but that could be a consideration I want you to know i'm alive right um my plan is again to take a vacation from the overhead of youtube I'm going to be returning, the plan is, on Wednesday, the 28th of August, 2024. At that point, we'll be returning to regular What's Up Wednesdays and regular YouTube schedules. We're returning as a travel-focused channel. That would be going to national parks, taking trips of days, weeks, or months to cool places of a planned route plan, like national parks. Who did? Huh. Uh, there'll be more storytelling oriented have questions and far fewer van tours. I so initially I was thinking he needed a small mental break, but to know exactly what day your mental break is going to be over and you'll be perfectly fine again of uh, August 28th. So it doesn't sound like a mental break is necessary just because I haven't seen this yet. This is just leading well, up to this. Well, if your mental break is tied into your money, then it's like I can only afford to have a mental break until August 20th, maybe. Which makes it a... Uh, 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 um, stressful mental break. <laughs> so how do you unstress? But then also, when he said that he's going to bring um, national parks and stuff, my first thought is he's got to do a lot of stuff to be able to record inside national parks because technically it's illegal. It, they flip flop back and forth. Kara and Nate have discussed this on several of their videos. So go small, live large. Uh, look into that before you go out and record national parks especially being so visible on youtube yeah. as they go back and forth on what they consider to be a film crew or um you know commercial use and requiring permits that cost money take time to get and yeah they, they can have an impact on your content your content and your creative process on van tours to generate views for far too long the van's important but those of you that have your van you know it's about getting out there. That's what it's all about. Now I've been fortunate to save enough money over the years that I'm not going to starve to death on this sabbatical. So for that, I'm very thankful. So what's it mean for Go Small Live Large? As I mentioned, this is the last schedule. What's up Wednesday until I return? You may pop in just to check in on everybody. That would be fun. Um, again, very few um, posted videos to YouTube just to let them know I'm still alive. The algorithm that is. We will have no more scheduled van berries or roundups through the YouTube platform. Um, in fact, I'm going to... I don't know what that means. <clears throat> yeah, I think what he's talking about were like meetups and different events that he was scheduled through YouTube. Okay. Oh, the van roundup in September, or the 
Vanderbilt camp out in September. Um, it was going to be at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. I'm not going. I've not bought a ticket because they're not available yet. They go on sale in seven days. I'm going to uh, release my camp spot. I will not be going to the uh, Bourbon Festival as a Banbury in September. However, for those of you on Patreon, they're at the true believer level. You know about our secret camp out in Florida at home base. That is, that is going to continue. So I'm very excited about that. And I would ask that um, if you want to kind of go with me on this new ride, uh, consider joining Patreon, patreon.com slash go small, live large. There's a $0 level, $10 level, 20 bucks uh, a level. And it would just be an art having part of that special community we built just over the last year. And it's a really tight community. We just, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. All right, Scott, keep going. So why a sabbatical? <sighs> Deep breath. Deep breath. A shot of whiskey. I need a vacation. <clears throat> I need a vacation from my dream life. YouTube is a huge commitment. For those of you that are content creators, you know how how tough it is to be a content creator. <laughs> it's way different than a job. YouTube is not like a 48 hour a week job where you get nights off, you get weekends off, you get holidays off. It's a demanding mistress and it's very fickle. And if you're not producing the exact kind of content that the algorithm rewards, you just kind of get left behind. That's what's been happening to me. Uh, let me share some, some numbers with you and what have you. Here we go, Scott. So um, let me, so I, my, I posted my very first YouTube video in April of 2018. I didn't have my van. We hadn't even ordered the van yet. I <laughs> don't think. And um, I posted a video a month up until August. Two, this is this video actually was me and Kyle going to our very first RV show. I was so excited. He was so not. Um, I started posting content at least weekly uh, beginning in um, uh, August of 2018. And ever since then, I have been posting one, two, three pieces of content, that'd be videos, up to YouTube plus What's Up Wednesday, which started in January 2021. So I'm not slacking on the effort. However, I'm going to show you some numbers here, and I want to uh, zoom in for you. I just did my taxes for 2023, and to kind of put this in perspective, for the entire year last year off YouTube, and that includes Super Chats, by the way. I see some big numbers. Thank you. It's so generous of you. We'll get to that in just a second. But all in on YouTube, uh, I made $24,861 for all of the effort on YouTube in 2023. Not looking to get any sympathy. I'm just saying, some can live on $2,000 a month, not me. So uh, let me share what's going on because the more effort I put in, the less I'm making. Mm -hmm. um, let me spin this forward. And this really was kind of what brought this to a head at this point in time. So these are views. This is off the um, YouTube studio, studio uh, app for creators like me. And views of my videos live and otherwise, for the first 90 days of 2024, if you look at the left-hand side, views are up 52%, more than the previous 90 days, which would have been Q4, 2023. And that's uh, over 800,000 800, views of videos. Pretty awesome, right? Again, not for lack of effort. Watch time for the first 90 days in 2024, left red uh, circle there, up 34%, more than the previous 90 days. See the big spike there? That's the super show. I bet his money is down. There's a lift. <coughs> and over 78,000 hours of Go Small Live Large content has been generated in these 90 days. Downy makes clothes softer, fresher, and better. We breathe life into your laundry. Home tastes so good. Your family. Told you we got ads. Subscribers, really happy to say in the first 90 days of 2024, subscriber, uh, subscribers were up. So far, all his metrics are up, previous moving up, doing good things. Every single metric is going up. His um, views, his watch time, his subscribers, everything has gone up the first 90 days of 2024. And I will bet money his revenue is down the first 90 days. 2,000 people over that 90 day period. Revenue for the first 90 days in 2024, there you can see the red bubble, 
was $5,273 divided by January, February, March. It's about $1,700 a month. Not shabby. Not shabby. The problem is, if I look at just the Same. last 90 days, or the last 30 days, that's the month of March, the revenue has already shrank over $400. And this continues to be the trend, which is it's this roller coaster of a demanding mistress that is called YouTube. I think that's why you have more and more YouTube content creators either pumping out more and more content or saying F this because the numbers going up in every single aspect and your money going down makes absolutely no sense and it starts to play this weird mind game. My opinion is there's a problem with YouTube, especially from the perspective of channels and how they are run. And I was actually watching, I think, VidIQ. And VidIQ, they were talking about how they uploaded 1,700 videos, this, that, and the other. But VidIQ continuously, now granted, VidIQ has so many other uh, methods of producing revenue outside of AdSense, so they're making plenty of money. But one, one of the things that I disagree with the most out of most of their content and content like theirs is how they specifically leverage this idea of growing your channel. And this is I've noticed this since the beginning of this year. They've been it's been a heavy push on growing a channel, growing a channel, growing a channel. No one in this space, this YouTube coaching space, is talking about making more money. Mm. They're talking about growing a channel. Well, what does that mean? Getting more views, getting more subs, getting more likes, getting more comments, posting more shorts, this, that, and the other. And for me, I don't care how big or small the channel is. I much rather find ways to make the channel help earn more money, even if it doesn't come from YouTube paying you directly. Part of this with Go Small Live Large is the type of content that he makes and the market, the consumer, advertisers, the economy, business, the strategy has changed. You're going to have to change with it or you're going to have to figure something else out. And YouTube continues to present this metric of, oh, look, your views are up because you're posting more. But even YouTube isn't telling you that you're making more money because they don't really want you to think about it like that. They want you to think about it from the perspective of views. Of vanity. Yes. And I don't agree with that, but that's just me. That's just my take. And granted, there are ways, which he'll discuss here in a minute, of how he can change to get more views which he would need to offset the lower pay. But me personally, I would focus more on increasing my pay per view than anything else. But that's just me. You know why though? Um, YouTube is a business and their business relies on people watching. So for YouTube, views is the top vanity, the top thing you need. And so for these content um, creators like VidIQ who want you to grow your channel, it's because they know that in the eyes of YouTube themselves, they would look great if they had more views and were helping other people get more views because that's what helps YouTube. And it's, it's a treadmill. I used to have seven Saturdays. I now have seven Mondays. And because the income from YouTube is fairly anemic, now I can move these numbers by doing things that aren't me. I can make negative stuff. I can talk by things I hate about. You know, van life sucks for these reasons. I've experimented and... <laughs> it's interesting that he knows that by going negative, he would make more money. Or he would get more views, let me rephrase. Ooh, yeah, there you, money, there you go. He would make more money, he would get more views. There you go. Now, actually, I, it's funny because YouTube showed me Jay Klaus this morning on my feed. And Jay Klaus put up a community post. And the community post says... It's funny. People want candy even if they need vegetables. This is where packaging comes in. If people don't, one, click your video, two, open your email, three, play your podcast, then the content doesn't matter. Give people their vegetables, but make eating them feel as enticing as candy. Mm -hmm. I hate to say it, folks, that's clickbait. Yes. That's clickbait. That is the definition of clickbait. The I same hate to say it. people hate. That's clickbait. And it will keep your revenue low. It will keep your RPM low. Just saying. Really work. Some of my competitors put out a bunch of negative stuff to get, the, it ain't me. So 
I'm kind of the oddball. I get it. Um, so what I want to do, is, what I need to do is rely on some partners for income. That was kind of the game, to be able to get out of my corporate job. Create now, Alec, 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 I know you're listening. I want you to pay close attention to we're right around 11 minutes, 24 seconds on this video. I really want you to pay attention to what's on the screen right here. We need to create some uh, fun on the road and find some sponsors to help augment uh, YouTube. And I'm happy to say I've had some great partners over the year, including Embassy RV and Volta. Amazing, right? Uh, we built a whole family around Embassy RV, and I'm so pleased to be part of that family. Uh, <sighs> And my wife, I still work. <clears throat> and we had two new partners this year. I'm really excited. Rover Vans and Sunshine, Sunshine State RVs. I called all my partners I've worked with over the years, including some of the uh, manufacturers uh, like Coachman RV, Nick there, and Winnebago Motorhomes, my home dealer. And I said, hey, here's what's up. Here's why. And though they were surprised, They understood. More importantly, they were very understanding and, and supportive and said, hey, take a vacation. We'll pick up where we left off. In fact, let's make bigger and better plans. So I just want to thank all of you for being in this audience, number one, for the partners for being there for the ride. And without them, I probably would have stopped this just because putting out the amount of effort to make 24 grand a year, frankly, isn't worth it. Um, but we put a lot of investment and time and effort, all this together to bring this community together. So I like how he said that to put all this effort and energy in to make 24 grand isn't worth it. And I'm going to stand by my position and my stance, uh, much like I'm pretty sure most people, if their job stopped paying them or continued to pay them less, they would no longer do that job. I am here for one reason primarily and that is to make money and then the second from that is to enjoy how i make that money and then the third is the is the added bonus and benefit of connecting with great people but i'm here first and foremost for a selfish reason a reason that youtube exists a reason that the ceo of youtube youtube neil mohan is promoting for the ability for people to create businesses and and make money uh, you know through this by way of and with the assistance of this platform and I enjoy creating content I enjoy the technology I enjoy everything about it I enjoy it even in instances where I'm never even seen on the channel and nobody even knows I exist but those are the top two and then the third is connecting with good people because I can almost guarantee without a shadow of a doubt that I can ex execute on the first two no matter what I can start a channel, I can make money, and I can enjoy what I'm doing, no doubt. The third one, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that I'm going to connect with great people mm -hmm. and build relationships. So that the fact that he says that it's about the money, not necessarily verbatim, but the effort and energy to make 24 grand, I'm glad he said it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, we've got to figure out what's next. So what's next? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I knew this would be tough. Uh, let me just look over here and see what's coming up next. Um, so what's coming up next is for me, um, after Bisbee, uh, I'm really happy to say that my partner Kyle of 24 years is flying into Tucson. We're going to do the whole Bisbee thing together. And for those of you going to Bisbee and were there last year, you know what a hoop and a holler it's going to be. When Bisbee's done, I'm going to pile him into the van and we are driving back to Florida. I'm so returning to partner is a boyfriend. I don't know. I would assume. I would assume as well. I was just curious, which is interesting to me because a lot of people are very closed minded on stuff like that. And then to have gay RV life, I think is interesting that he's got such a following, which is great. I, until this point, I would have never guessed that. I would have immediately. I would like not immediately. I wouldn't have guessed it. Right. Uh -huh. Maybe a little bit of some of the emotional stuff leading yeah. up to it. But I will say that uh, it was funny because I was actually uh, YouTube showed me a little clip of Van Wise this morning and when she had the woman had a chemical burn on her eyeball or something and she was gonna you know tell everybody over 11 minutes to wear safety glasses when handling chemicals 
seems like a no-brainer, but hey, I was today years old when I found out you needed to know that. But they've got their start, I think, as traveling, van life, nomads, but as a couple of lesbians. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what the space is like for a gay couple in that respect, but I would be willing to bet it's probably not very saturated and could possibly be a very, very... It would be something that I would possibly look into uh, and investigate as far as the viability of that being a uh, profitable foundation of the content creation. One of the first signs that gave it away when, well, in the very beginning, I was like, the second started talking, I was like, I wonder. But then when we moved here and you've got Freddie Mercury in the background, you have, it looks like the original. Um, oh, we got the detective Bond. squirrel over here. You have all the guys in the background. No, no women, all men in the background. Okay, like, okay. okay. That makes all right. sense. I didn't see that. And one of the first things I'm going to do is hire a personal trainer at the Anytime Fitness near uh, one of the houses. And I'm going to get into a physical regimen that is going to pay off big time. I'm really excited about that. Um, we already have a cruise planned. He's really good on getting free cruises to the casino. So mid-May, we're jumping on a Caribbean cruise for about two weeks. Pretty excited about that. One thing about Kyle, all the previous years when I was leaving, I'm like, sayonara, I'll see you in December. Uh, return to home base. This year, there's a very different weird feeling. Maybe it's the death of my mom, death of my dad, the separation from past and present with those two. And all I have really left is my brother and sister, which, you know, your brothers and sisters, and Kyle. So there's just something very different about the feeling this year, departing Florida, and it just didn't feel right. That really kind of came to a head. What's next for Go Small, Live Large? Um, talked about the content, talked about the What's Up Wednesday. We'll pop in here and there, but I'm pretty much taking a break. However, I'm leaning into Patreon. Um, what I wanted to do is, um, let's see, stay in walls next, okay. Um, leaning into Patreon and our Zoom chats. I'm gonna experiment. My very first thought is it's going to be hard to grow your Patreon without somebody, without something pushing people to your Patreon, like new uploads on YouTube. It's harder to grow a paywall location if nobody knows about it. Yeah, paywalls don't have algorithms. So yeah. you have to be your own algorithm. You have to be your biggest fan, your biggest cheerleader. You have to produce your own inbound traffic. Mm -hmm. Now, the good news is with people knowing that he's taking a break for a few months and then not wanting to miss out on him and knowing that he will be on Patreon, he hopefully will pick out, pick up like a substantial amount of people over there, even if it's, for, hopefully it's not for the zero. And if it is, hopefully they still support monet, monet, monetarily somehow. That's the right word. Um, but hopefully that works out for him that way. So uh, it's actually, I think he has a great audience where he has the comfort level to share that. Mm -hmm. As some folks will probably say, oh, I can't believe you're selling out. I can't believe you're gonna charge me to watch your content, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. Well, I mean, if you really wanna watch it, then you gotta realize that he can't afford to make it. Yeah. <laughs> so then eventually he won't be able to make it and therefore you won't be able to watch it. So, you know, there has to be some form of salute. There has to be a balance here. But for me, I would steer clear of the $0 and unfortunately, it, you know, I could be cold and, you know, uh, cruel for doing that, but I've been down that road and I have seen very little in form of return of appreciation by offering anything of value for free. Mm -hmm. And I would at least charge a dollar. Mm -hmm. I would at least charge a dollar. So that's just me. That's just me. Side note, there is a Patreon and we are both on the Patreon. It's primarily hers, but I'm on there every now and then. But Patreon gets content that we don't post on YouTube and more interaction and, and more of a direct connection. So come on over to Patreon if you want. Traveling in my van without the overhead of YouTube. So think about this for a second, please. And that is, I've never traveled in my van doing YouTube without doing YouTube. Now I'm gonna experiment traveling in my van without YouTube. To I travel. can't wait. And have fun. Um, and I'm going to experiment yeah, with it changes uh, travel everything. destination style videos. I'm going to look at a lot of them on the on the YouTube and figure out what uh, formats I like. Maybe I can um, come up with my own and just learn better storytelling around destinations. We'll probably come back with a different format of what's up Wednesday. i got to figure out my new audio gear that I spent a few thousand dollars on. haven't even used it yet. And what's probably going to happen is I'm going to likely stop traveling full time, which means I leave in December, return, or leave in, what, February? And return in December for Christmas. 
I'm probably going to stop full-time van travel and living in my van, assuming one of the houses are open. So the punchline there is, I'm going to be more like most of you, because this is all I've known for six years. Well, since February 2019, when I went full-time. So what that means is, I'll be able to understand how you travel and help folks understand through the experience of six years of doing this, how to plan trips for days, weeks, or months, and maybe national parks will be on the list and some of the other things. And it'll be a two week trip on return to home base. Now, I really want to get it back out west. So, what's going to happen is at some point next year, I'm going to have to skedaddle all the way west. So, we do the Rockies and that kind of thing. I'm even toying with leaving the van at my brother's house, flying back. So, at least the van's in the west, which might open up an opportunity for a new van to do the east coast and central US. I don't know. We'll see. A lot of things up in the air. When I do come back on the airways on YouTube, my plan is to travel uh, for a long trip up the East Coast. I've never been in the on the East Coast, north of Philadelphia, uh, in the van. So I'm really excited about that. So that's kind of the, some of the plans there. A lot of you are in here. I appreciate. So that. I have questions. If all the content he put up only afforded him made him twenty four thousand dollars, I don't know how much his Patreon is making. I'm gonna have to assume enough for him to continue on Patreon. But where else is he getting money then if he's like, well, I'm going to leave the van over there and maybe buy another van? Where does the rest of that money Well, he said if one of the houses are available, so I would assume he has some investment properties. Okay, maybe. That makes sense. I'm sure he's got other yeah. revenue streams and maybe only his 24000 which I don't remember if that included everything or if that was just YouTube. He said YouTube revenue. Yeah, so, you know, sponsorship deals and other things like that. True. Granted, you know, if his numbers are good, then maybe he's making 50000 Maybe he's making 60000 70000 with YouTube being uh, under 50% of his total. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know for sure. Um, but you know, his parents died, maybe he got money. I don't yeah, know. Okay. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I don't, I don't watch his content. And in fact, it's really, it's really interesting because I pulled up his channel. He's got 762 videos, which I assume includes shorts and live streams and his highest viewed video. Uh, he's got 40,000 subscribers. His highest viewed video is 1.3 million views. It was a year ago Oh wow! on an innovative camper van tour by a Solo female traveler in embassy. So the video wasn't even in embassy RV. Him. It, it's a solo female traveler. They it, got it. Uh, it. It says no wood, no black tank, no solar, which honestly, I'm not sure if the draw was from the extremely primitive, you know, uh, format. Mm -hmm. uh, a solo female. You know, no black tank, no solar. I mean, that's pretty strong right there. Yeah. But the solo female, I mean, you can't argue and deny the strength of solo female in the RV YouTube content mm -hmm. community. Come on, guys. Um, but beyond that, his number two video was the all new B van 2023 range line by Airstream on ProMaster 2022 Hershey RV show a year ago, 194,000. Hershey, Pennsylvania. We were supposed to go there, by the way. His RV tours do get good views or have, but far in between. And that's not necessarily something that I would want to try and build the business off of from having access to and the amount of effort, time and energy put into that. And, you know, his last video besides this one and his views are 2,400, 4,800, 29,000, 8,000, 81,000. 19,000. He's, he's the roller coaster like most of us are these days. But, you know, the views are usually coming in on the tours. So, yeah. of the vans. The live streams are anywhere from 1,800 to 758 to 870, 1,400, 1,200. So, there's some things that I would be looking at and I would be, you know, really diving into strategically mm -hmm. to accomplish the goals that I have set out for myself stay true to myself and my community and also serve the algorithm so that you can be rewarded. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how to stay involved if you'd like to, and I really pray that you do because we've all invested so much. Um, so one of the easiest things, and I promise to put more content here, is on the Go Small Live Large Facebook page that Chris and Sandy put together. Um, I have posted here just because there's I got so many other things going on, mentioned all that. So here I will pop in more often and say hi, put some content here. The other thing that I'm doing is leaning really heavily into Patreon. We started this community a little over a year ago, and for those of you that are part of this, you know uh, I'm really passionate about it. We share a lot of stuff. You, you'll never see this, a lot of this stuff on YouTube, Instagram, or otherwise, because I'm leaning in on Patreon. 
uh, with videos, photos, advice. We'll continue our, our Zoom group chat twice a month. Uh, urban camping locations will still be revealed, so I'm going to travel in my van. And those will be revealed for the uh, $20 month. You can stop at any time. Those are the dollar levels. Everybody gets something. And for those of you at the True Believer level, our next Patreon Zoom is going to be uh, next Friday the 19th, which is going to be from Bisbee. So we might be passing around the phone, the microphone, around the campfire at the Bisbee and letting everybody um, kind of share. We might make that an open one. I don't know. What do you think? So that's what I want to share with you. All right, guys. The GoPro got hot. I'm going to shock a lot of you, but um, this is it's time to do something different. The effort is <coughs> real. The results are real, but... Um, I need seven Saturdays and then some back, not seven Mondays and not so much for the return. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If you give us a thumb up, that would be awesome. So I hope you enjoyed that and have a better understanding of why I'm doing this um, and what I'm looking to do when I come back at the end of August, 2024. I want to thank each and every one of you for, for all the support you've uh, given me, my channel and this audience. Uh, over six, well, about six years of putting content up on YouTube. It would be a delight to have you join the Patreon Go Small Live Large community. Grow on like crazy. There's a free and a $10 a month and a $20 a month level. So for free, it'd be great to have you there and keep the community rolling forward while I take a pause on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Journey on and peace be with you. So let me let me reiterate my stance on the free. Just being 100% honest and true. If I offered free then the free offering would be a tool for marketing and advertising to upsell and entice those who are somewhat interested to become paying customers. Yeah. Okay. So let's just be honest. Let's be a hundred percent real. Now, one of the really important things here is that, I don't know. It's like, almost like, I feel like one day I wish I could sit and really reveal to my audience, my plans and, you know, my decisions and, you know, what I think and things like that, but I don't feel like I'm there yet on this channel. We got some work to do. We got we got some uh, attrition we need to have uh, to be completed. We have the algorithm that needs to be updated in regard to my audience and avatar. But at the end of the day, my primary goal here is to inform and educate and entertain, especially for those who are interested in not only like money and finance and, and things like that, but uh, also growing on YouTube and building businesses, real businesses that pay real money by way of leveraging YouTube and quite possibly other platforms in the near future. You're just smiling over there. I don't know if you have anything to say. No, not really. You got something to say. You always got something to say. Mm. <laughs> no, I was just thinking like... Um, I wonder if after his sabbatical, he'll come back the way he wants to. And if it doesn't pan out monetarily the way he's hoping it will, because it sounds like he's about to invest a lot of money in hopes of getting back a lot of money. I wonder if this time next year we're having the same conversation. That's a really good question. That's a really good question. And, um, I would be very, very interested in having a conversation and a chat with Go Small Live Large Scott, I believe. And if you would like to, then hit me up. The easiest way to do that would be through Instagram and send me a DM and uh, good luck. Good luck. Enjoy your vacation. Enjoy your sabbatical. Enjoy I'll the cruise. Enjoy the cruise. Enjoy living seven Saturdays in your van without always having to be on and recording and uh and i hope that it works out for you no matter what mm -hmm.